We're diving deep into the frozen heart of the Cold War with the story of Camp Century and Project Iceworm. It's a story of ambition, secrecy and the incredible engineering feat of building a city under the ice. So grab your parkas because we're heading to the frozen north. Imagine the paranoia of the 1950s, the constant fear of nuclear annihilation. The US feared a surprise attack from the Soviet Union and they needed a way to retaliate, even if their main bases were destroyed. Enter Project Iceworm, top secret plan, so insane it might just work. The idea was to build a network of tunnels stretching two and a half thousand miles under the Greenland ice sheet. These tunnels would house hundreds of nuclear missiles hidden and ready to strike back. But how could they pull this off in one of the harshest environments on earth? Enter the Vikings. The Danes still controlled Greenland which the US military looked like a great location for a hidden base within striking distance of Moscow and with tacit approval from the Danish government, the US started to build Camp Century. This was the above ground base that served as the entrance to this icy metropolis. In 1959, hundreds of soldiers and engineers braved sub zero temperatures to carve out a life under the ice. They built dormitories, mess halls, a church, even a theatre, all buried deep within the glacier. An unclassified 1960 planning document has since noted the missile force is hidden and elusive. It is deployed into an extensive cut and cover tunnel network in which men and missiles are protected from weather and to a degree from enemy attack. The deployment is invulnerable to all but massive attacks and even then most of the force can be launched. Concealment and variability of the deployment pattern are exploited to prevent the enemy from targeting the critical elements of the force. To do this, the US military had to ship massive amounts of equipment and huge vehicles, ice-cutting machines, sleds, cranes, and even a nuclear reactor. Engineers worked hard to dig massive trenches that they then covered over with sheets of steel and then those were covered over by snow and ice. They had to build in flexible plumbing. They had to use flexible sewage because the ice was moving underneath them little bits at a time. And this ultimately would become the downfall of Camp Century. They even had a mascot. They had Mucklock, who was an Alaskan husky. And he lived there for almost seven years as the camp dog. Unfortunately, the $2.71 billion plan didn't quite work out. There was to be a series of interconnecting tunnels spanning some two and a half thousand miles that would allow missiles to be moved around different firing locations, ensuring that the Russians would never be able to knock out their retaliatory force. Life was tough. It was isolated and it was dangerous. But the soldiers persevered powered by the world's first mobile nuclear reactor. Another Cold War marvel. But the biggest challenge wasn't the cold, it was the ice itself. Scientists soon discovered the Greenland ice sheet wasn't as stable as they thought. The tunnels were moving, they were warping, threatening to collapse. The dream of a hidden missile network started to melt away. Effectively, the Greenland ice sheet was a gigantic glacier with various parts of it on a journey towards the edges. After just a few years, the project was deemed impractical. The missiles were never deployed and Camp Century was slowly abandoned. They left behind a chilling legacy. Tons of waste, including radioactive waste, now buried under the ice, raising environmental concerns. But there's more. Project Iceworm left an even different legacy and while it was a failure, it serves 
as a reminder of the lengths nations went to during the Cold War. It's a story of how human ingenuity pushed it to its limits, the dangers of secrecy and the lasting impact of our actions on the environment. And part of the deep drilling that the engineers did there, as part of the research cover, they drilled a 4,550 foot deep core into the ice sheet. And then when they hit earth, they drilled a further 12 feet, brought up a plug of frozen sand, dirty ice, cobbles and mud. The military then moved that ice core from its own freezers to the University at Buffalo in the 70s. And then the core ended up in Denmark in the 90s, where it was kept frozen. And now in 2021, scientists have determined that it was actually ice-free at some point in the past million years. And that ice core also contained bits of bugs and plants, giving us a better understanding of the ice sheet and how long it's been there. Tests on the plants were inconclusive for the actual date of them because no carbon-14 was left. But testing on the rock fragments using the latest techniques suggests that the ice sheet is between 400,000 and 16,000 years old, not the millions of years thought previously. Losing the whole ice sheet is estimated to raise sea level by 5 to 20 feet worldwide. It's not been there as long as we thought. How long will it stay? The next time you see images of the vast Greenland ice sheet, remember the hidden secrets, both natural and man-made, that are squirreled away under that flat expanse of hard, cold ice. An area so inhospitable that it could be on another planet. In fact, maybe this was a dry run for building a colony on Mars or Titan. Just think about that. It's a tale of ambition, caution and a reminder that even the most extreme plans can melt away in the face of reality and nature. Thanks for joining us on this icy exploration. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more fascinating rabbit holes. What other secrets would you like to see uncovered? Let us know in the comments below. Till the next time, stay curious.